What happens when you combine the simplest molecule with the simplest solution? It probably makes something pretty simple, right? Wrong. Turns out there's some key concepts about hydrogen water that needs to be explained before we can truly understand how it works. And we will explain those things on this episode of H2 Minutes. We've discussed hydrogen and hydrogen gas in depth in our videos. We even learned about water, but when you combine them, you get the most common way to ingest H2 through hydrogen rich water. It seems like a foreign concept to most. So there are a few key concepts to learn to really understand hydrogen water. First, let's break it down. We know H2 is the simplest and smallest molecule in the universe, and it looks like this. And water is, of course, H2O, and it looks like this. In hydrogen water, the H2 is dissolved into the water, but does not bond with the H2O water molecule. So there's nothing new or weird in hydrogen water. It's just H2 and H2O. For the H2 to be therapeutic to the human body, it must be dissolved into the water and existing in nanobubble form. You will not be able to see nanobubbles with the naked eye. Even though most, if not all, sources for producing hydrogen water produce water with visible bubbles, it is the bubbles that you can't see that are able to stay in solution long enough to be beneficial to the body. So while visible bubbles indicate hydrogen gas in the water, it is not necessarily a desirable quality and essentially represents wasted hydrogen gas that would not be used by the body. Dissolving hydrogen gas is the key to hydrogen water. It is relatively easy to produce hydrogen gas, but dissolving it, it's much more difficult. But if H2 is a gas, how can we dissolve a gas in the water? Actually, the concept is quite common. Ever drink a soda? Carbonated beverages have carbon dioxide gas dissolved into the liquid. Obviously, this is why they're fizzy or bubbly and is also why they go flat after a while. Gas will always find a way out of solution eventually. H2 is the smallest and lightest gas, so it dissipates very quickly out of water. This process slows down the colder the water is, but it's safe to say if you're drinking hydrogen water, you better drink it pretty fast. And don't think that because you have it in a bottle that you're safe from this effect. Hydrogen gas can escape out of plastic, metal, and even glass. H2 can really get out of anything with time. Science has found, however, that aluminum is able to contain hydrogen in solution a little longer, which is why it is being used for the new prepackaged hydrogen water products. Another key concept about hydrogen water, and contrary to popular belief, is that H2 is not pH dependent, nor does it affect the pH of water. H2 can be dissolved into any pH of water, or any liquid for that matter. It will not change the pH of said liquid unless the method in which it's being produced by alters the pH as a byproduct. The good news is you don't have to guess whether or not you have dissolved H2 in your water. These little drops can help you test the parts per million of hydrogen dissolved into water. Studies show that the range in which hydrogen gas is therapeutic for humans in drinking water is from 0.5 to 1.6 ppm. 1.6 ppm is the maximum dissolved hydrogen level under normal atmospheric pressure, but is not the highest dissolved hydrogen levels you can possibly get in your water. If you can increase the pressure, you can increase dissolved hydrogen levels. Some methods are limited to how much H2 they can dissolve, while other methods can achieve much more than 1.6 ppm. Right now, in 2017, there are many methods of producing hydrogen water even though we will surely see more and more in the coming years. One of the oldest and most common ways of producing hydrogen water is with the standard water ionizer. Ionizers use basic water electrolysis to produce alkaline water and levels of dissolved hydrogen, depending on type, brand, and source water. Ionizers used to be one of the only ways to obtain hydrogen water here in the States until the research of hydrogen gas started becoming more known. Now there are other hydrogen water machines that can infuse water with hydrogen gas without affecting the water's pH and is not dependent on source water conductivity. There are also products that use elemental magnesium to react with water to produce hydrogen gas. These can be in the form of tablets or sticks and can be a cheaper and more portable method. Another method of ingesting hydrogen water is with the new prepackaged hydrogen waters I mentioned earlier. These products even include beverages with flavors and vitamins and minerals added and may prove to be a popular item in the years to come. We will have future videos over each technology 
to break down exactly how they work to produce or to dissolve H2 into water. Until then, feel free to hit me up with all your H2 or product related questions. Stay tuned for our next episode where we will dive into some key misconceptions about hydrant water. So whatever method you choose for your daily hydrant water, know that every method has its strengths and weaknesses. What matters is finding the right product that fits your needs and budget as long as you're able to get your daily dose of H2. And speaking of dose, that was your dose of H2 in two minutes. H2 Minutes needs your support. Go to patreon.com slash H2 Minutes and support H2 Minutes and be a part of the hydrogen education movement.